نظری Hello and welcome to News Hour on UNT TV. Today is Wednesday, 20th of September, 2022, and it's equivalent to 5th of Rabiul Awal, 1445 after Hijra. The headlines Africa does not wish to replace all shackles with new ones, says Tenobu in first UNGA address. On President Shopo, Abuja can be 37 states, Atiku and OBJ tell Supreme Court. Two more doctors nabbed in Plessu over organ harvesting. An under foreign scene, Commonwealth partially suspends Gabon pending restoration of democracy. And in sport, Mbappe Hakimi on target as PSG defeat Dortmund in Champions League opener. And those were the headlines. And for details and more of the stories, I am Rukayet Sani Ibrahim. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu gave his inaugural address at the United Nations General Assembly in small hours on Wednesday in which he championed the need for Africa to surmount foreign expectation to attain prosperity through democratic ideals. During his address on the fourth day of the 7th to 8th session of the assembly held at the UN headquarters, Tinubu said Africa seeks to be neither appendage nor patron and it does not wish to replace old shackles with new ones. He spoke to other heads of government hours after similar addresses, including those of U.S. President Joe Biden and Ukrainian leader Vladimir Zelensky. The president spoke on the team rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 Agenda and its sustainable development goals towards peace, prosperity, progress and sustainability for all. Noting that failures in good governance have hindered Africa, Tinubu decried that broken promises, unfair treatment and outright expectation from abroad also exacted a heavy toll on Africans' ability to progress. According to Tinubu, global institutions, other nations and their private sector actors must see African development as a priority, not just for Africa but in their interests as well. The president said due to both long-standing internal and external factors, Nigerians and Africans' economic structures have been skewed to impede development, industrial expansion, job creation and the equitable distribution of wealth. Determined to nullify the election of President Bola Ahmed Tenebo, candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Alaji Atiku Abubakar and his counterpart in the Labour Party, LP, Mr. Peter Obi, yesterday, large separate appeals before the Supreme Court. The two candidates in their appeals prayed the Apex Court to set aside the judgment of the Presidential Election Petition Court, PEPC, which affirmed Tinubu of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, as the winner of the February 25 presidential election. Specifically, they argued that the lower court erred in its judgment because Tinubu did not get at least 25% of votes cast in the federal capital territory, FCT Abuja. Adding that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEG, deliberately refused to transmit the results of the poll electronically to its portal in accordance with its guidelines. They also urge that the PEPC glues over their claims of manipulation of the poll conducted in breach of the Constitution and Electoral Act in spite of their weighty evidence. Whereas Atiku, through his Consortium of 67 lawyers that comprise 18 senior advocates of Nigeria, led by Chief Chris Uche San, filed 35 grounds of appeal to challenge Chenbo's victory, albeit through his own team of lawyers, led by Dr. Levi Uzoku San, filed 51 grounds of appeal before the Apex Court. The police command in Plateau State has arrested two other medical doctors in connection with the alleged harvest of vital human organs by suspected quack doctor Noah Kekere. The command's police public relations officer, Alabo Alfred, who disclosed this to newsmen yesterday, said that the suspects, alongside Kekere, were currently in police custody and were being investigated. Kekere, a suspected quack doctor, was recently arrested after he was accused of harvesting a woman's kidney during a surgery. The Plateau State chapter of the Nigerian Medical Association had disassociated itself from Kekere, insisting that investigations had revealed that he was not a medical doctor. Alabo, who did not disclose the identity of the two suspects, added that the Commissioner of Police in the state will soon constitute a high-powered committee of medical experts to extensively investigate and examine the woman 
who claimed Kekere removed one of her vital organs during surgery. The Zonal Coordinator of the National Emergency Management Agency, Nema Eugene Nyelong, has confirmed that three people died while over 150 houses were destroyed after floods caused by heavy downpour wrecked havoc in some communities in just not local government area of Plateau State. Nyelong said the affected areas devastated by flood include Ngwarogo, Gangare, Rikas, Bachirot, and Etubaba communities which expressed heavy flooding after the torrential rains, which began on Saturday and lasted all through Sunday and Monday. Nyelong, who spoke with newsmen in Jos, explained that his agency received a distress call to confirm that three persons had died in the flood. He said Nema and other stakeholders were visiting the affected communities to access the situation. According to the Zonal Coordinator of Tributary Connect, the communities and makes them susceptible to flood, noting that apart from the tributary, the areas had poor drainage systems. The NEMA official further appealed to the state government to ensure residents vacate flood-prone areas as a matter of urgency. No fewer than eight security agents comprising soldiers, policemen and our joint security and civil defense corps have been killed by gunmen in Imo State. The incident which happened on Tuesday morning on Umwala Maku community, Ehimembano, local government area of the state, have thrown the area into panic. The Joint Security Task Force team, who were in two security trucks, were ambushed and set ablaze by the attackers. None of them survived as they were burned inside their operational vehicles. A security operative who does not want to be mentioned said, told newsmen that reinforcement teams have been sent to the scene of the crime with the intent to arrest the suspects and rescue the corpses of the slain security operatives. Police in River State have killed four suspected kidnappers in Odimode Forest, a hard east local government area of River State. The police had stormed the Odimude Forest in search of remains of the Divisional Police Officer of Ahawada Division, Bako Angbashim, a superintendent of police who was killed by cultists terrorizing Ahawada communities. The State Commissioner of Police, Mwenye Mecca, who disclosed yesterday in Port Harcourt, while addressing newsmen, said police operatives have stormed the Edimode Forest based on reliable information that the cultists that killed Agbashi were hiding in the area. A maker who was reading out recent achievements of the command noted that the cultists had engaged the police operatives in crossfire and that the four cultists were fatally wounded while many others escaped the scene. Reports of plots to impeach Senate's President Gotu Akpabio assumed a new trace on Tuesday following indications that no fewer than 10 of the former governors in the upper chamber and a coalition of civic organizations are now calling for his impeachment. Some pro Akpabio centers were on Tuesday said to have embarked on a troubleshooting mission to their colleagues, even as some of them were reportedly contemplating getting there. Dr. Abdullahi Ganduje led all Progressives Congress APC National Working Committee NWC involved. While the anti Akwabu centers described the earlier reports of planned impeachment as phantom. Parliamentary watchdogs, the Coalition of Parliament Parliamentary Democracy, CPD, asked the Senate President to step down, having reportedly fallen out of favor with his colleagues in the Senate. In a statement by its national coordinator, Dr. Menike Johnson, CPD, on Tuesday, accused Senator Akpabio of seeking to heat up the policy by pointing fingers, whereas his colleagues had clearly adduced that his failure to fit into the duties of a presiding officer and providing a transparent and credible leadership as reason for their decision to move against him. Former President Olu Shigono Basanjo has weighed in on the rising military coup in Africa, saying the development shows that young people are in search of liberators. In recent years, there have been seven coups across Africa, with the latest happening in Gabon on August 30. Niger, Burkina Faso, Sudan, Guinea and Mali are all under military rule. Speaking at Olusha Gunabasanjo Presidential Library in Apiokota, Ogun State, during an interactive session with a group of youth from Africa for Africa Youth Initiative A4A, the former president said he would not support a coup considering his experience in the hands of former military dictator, late General Sani Abacha. Obasanjo's certain conditions have been encouraging military takeovers across the continent while calling for the entrenchment of true democratic principles with God-given attributes as a way of discouraging coups in the continent. 
a passenger urge African youth to embrace to brace up and take leadership positions today and not tomorrow, which may never come. And on the foreign scene, the Commonwealth has announced a partial suspension of Gabon following the August 30 military coup in the Central African nation. The partial suspension was instituted during the 63rd Commonwealth Ministerial Action Group meeting in New York on sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly to discuss developments in member states. Held on Monday, the meeting was chaired by Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Tourism of Samao Fiem, Naomi Matafa, according to a statement made public on Tuesday. Minister from Barbados, Canada, Ghana, Mauritius and Rwanda and representative of Belize, Malaysia and Malta were also in attendance. According to the statement, the ministers expressed the collective concern of the Commonwealth on the political situation in Gabon, strongly condemned the unconstitutional removal of the elected government from office and called for the restoration of democracy. And in sport, Paris Saint-Germain got their Champions League campaign off to a winning start on Tuesday as a Kylian Mbappe penalty set them up for a 20 for, for a 2-0 victory over Borussia Dortmund at the Parc des Princes. Similarly, Joao Felix struck twice as Barcelona flexed their muscles with a crushing 5-0 win over Royal Antwerp in the Champions League on Tuesday, showing their determination to be considered among Europe's elite once again. In the same vein, Julian Alvarez saved Manchester City's blushes after Red Star Belgrade took a shock lead at the Etihad as the holders began their Champions League defence with a 3-1 win on Tuesday. However, AC Milan were held to a goalless draw on their home soil when they faced Premier League side Newcastle in their opening game of their Champions League account. And with the spot news, we've come to the end of our bulletin for today. You can follow us on our social media handles at Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Unity Radio FM TV respectively. You can also watch us live on the satellite decoder Badarsat, which has been watched in about eight countries of the world free. You can also stream and watch us live on our YouTube channel at Unity FM TV. I am Ruka Yetsani Ibrahim. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of our programs. Do have yourself a lovely day.